What's up guys? Welcome back to Rosie Wrestling. My name is Safe. And I'm Massa. And today we're gonna be talking about last night's gauntlet match uh, that took place obviously on Monday Night Raw. Uh, so we're kind of changing up uh, the way we the way we review shows. We're not gonna review Raw and SmackDown per se, but we're gonna be uh, just kind of delving into one specific talking point or just talking about uh, just having one discussion uh, about something that happened either on Raw, SmackDown, or something that's just going on in the world of wrestling. So, obviously, uh, the big talk right now is about the gauntlet match that happened uh, last night. So, we're going to try to break it down, give our thoughts, uh, and so on. So, watching this match, I personally um, was... Uh, just comparing it with the men's gauntlet match right. that uh, the, they did before the Elimination Chamber. Now, in the men's gauntlet match, it was a lot longer, and I didn't expect them to do a whole hour this time. But Oh, that was more than an hour, the gauntlet match from last time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, um, they were... They were they honestly took up like two hours of the show. Right. But um, I was thinking about it in the way how... In the men's gauntlet match, we had Seth Rollins kind of come out as, you know, the, the star. Man. Yeah, the Iron Man. And I thought they were going to do that with the women in some way. They don't have to last as long as he did. But just make a star out of one of the women. Um, it also was in Richmond, Virginia, which is the hometown of Mickey James. So I thought that they would also kind of give her a little bit of a better showing. Um, but it starts out with Bailey and Liv Morgan, and this was just a squash match, essentially. Very quick. And then we have um, Bailey and Sarah Logan, which was a little bit longer, but also quick. I was very surprised by that. I thought yeah, it would... Yeah, so they debuted the Riot, Riot Squad, and they were supposed to be this big threat on SmackDown. That didn't really work out. They moved them to Raw. We also expect them to be a big threat mm -hmm. here on Raw. Uh, you know, I'm not expecting, you know, them to be... <laughs> Ruby, Ruby to be women's champion immediately mm -hmm. or anything like that uh, but you just look at the way like Triple H handles stables down in NXT like look at the Undisputed right. Era uh, look at Sanity uh, you know they're you know cared about here the Riot Squad I felt like they were just thrown together uh, similar to how Absolution were thrown together and uh, it just hasn't worked out. And here, they just kind of look like chumps. I mean, besides Ruby right. Riot, of course. And I think that the other woman, I think Ruby Riot, she's ready for the main um, main roster. But I feel like Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan aren't really. I don't really know much about them from NXT. They, honestly, I think the best course of action here is for Ruby to actually drop both of them. But if that does happen, Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan are just going to go into obscurity mm -hmm. because they're just gonna, they're just going to end up like... Uh, Dana Brooke and Alicia Fox and those kind of characters uh, basically glorified jobbers. Uh, so now we have Ruby and Bailey, and the Riot Squad was still in the ring, but when they went to commercial break, after they came back, you know, the Riot Squad was gone. It was just so Ruby. I'm guessing the referee sent them off or something. Right. You know, not Ru we didn't really get much context. Right. Um, and this one lasted a little bit longer, but we had Ruby actually come out the victor, which I was kind of surprised by. I thought Bailey would be the Iron Woman um, of this thing because... You know, we have a storyline between Bailey and Sasha, which wasn't really played here, which kind of annoyed me. I thought that I wanted a little bit more with that. What, you wanted Bailey to go against Sasha? No, I just wanted a little bit more work. Like, I wanted them to work a little bit more with the storyline. I feel like... Also. I don't know. I think maybe I kind of wanted Sasha to come right afterwards and maybe they have like a quick stare down or, or some sort of distraction. I don't know. I just felt like this kind of was a little bit sloppy. I think the... Um, just... So far, where we're at here in the gauntlet match, I feel like they wanted Bailey to basically be the Iron Woman because you look right. at it with Seth Rollins, he beat Roman, he beat John, and then he got eliminated by the third person, uh, which was which I believe was Elias. Elias. Um, here, though, you know Bailey beat Liv and beat Sarah Logan, but you see the difference in names right, right. there. Right. Seth beat John Cena and Roman Reigns, and those were long matches where he was getting a lot of beat down. Here, Bailey basically squash both of them right. so i felt like it was lazy and wwe claimed that they have equal opportunity for both men and women but you look at it the men were given two hours the women were given maybe 25 right um to really and i understand there's a difference in names there's a difference between sarah logan dana brooke and uh Liv morgan i mean comparing to the miz braun Strowman, john cena i understand right. that but how do you build new stars uh I mean, you give them a spotlight, and they didn't do that here. They gave them the main event, fair enough, 
but at the same time, it was just sloppy and it made the woman all kind of look weak. This is kind of like the woman's mid card, but if you're trying to have it be like the men's division, you know, the men have, you know, their un the undercard is still pretty decent, but then you have for the women, it just seems like everyone else is like obscure. So I really just didn't like how they played it like that. I felt like it was kind of sloppy. But moving on, we have now Ruby Riot and Mickey. Um, and Mickey lasted the longest so far. I feel like they did that because she was the hometown hero. Um, and, you know, not, nothing really was super special. I think this was a decent showing at least. Um, but then we also have Ruby and Sasha Banks. And this was kind of a little bit different because we had the Riot Squad finally inter decide to interfere. Um, but even that... Um, Sasha Banks end up qualifying. I thought the sequence at the end was very was right. really good. Um, I thought that was probably the most entertaining part of this gauntlet match. Uh, however, you know, similar to the men's gauntlet match where they, you know, they had Miz uh, overcome the odds and then go against Braun. Braun was the babyface, but you couldn't really sympathize with him at all. I right. know that's not really his style. He's the monster babyface, so I guess that's an excuse here. Here you have Sasha Banks Banks come out, and Ruby Wright's been here for not a while, but she's been here for a long time now. Right. And Sasha just beats her. Uh, I felt like that was kind of the wrong way to approach it. I think the role should have been reversed. Um, so, you know, for Sasha to overcome the odds against a fresh uh, heel in Ruby Riot, and you could have had a beat down, you could have had her, had, uh, could have had her had a com have a comeback, uh, but that didn't happen. So Sasha Banks ends up winning. I personally thought it was gonna be Ruby. Um, I thought, you know, maybe Sasha and Bailey are just gonna continue not gonna continue to be left off cards. Right. Uh, just maybe go against the Riot Squad or on the pre-show or something like that because I know they're building up to a match. Uh, but, you know, Sasha, I guess it's an okay decision. Um, you know, they, they had a big opportunity here. You know, mm -hmm. they, the difference between this and the men's uh, uh, gauntlet match is this was consequential. There's something at stake here. The winner gets to be put in the money in the bank. With the men, though, yeah, it was inconsequential at the end of the day. You know, Braun Strowman wins. He doesn't get anything because Elias already won a triple threat a few weeks before. Uh, when barely anyone qualified at that point for him to enter last. So, you know, I felt like that was lazy booking, although that was it was a great match and it made Seth Rollins look like a million bucks. That was lazy. I felt like, you know, there was no consequence. Why are they even working right. hard here? Um, they're going to make themselves tired for the match on Sunday. Here, there's a consequence. Uh, there's something to get exciting about. excited about. They only gave them a very, very small amount of time here to work their magic, and I really felt like it fell flat. Uh, and it just kind of shows you that they still don't care that much about the women's division. I'm sorry. Right. And I'm thinking about, like, the women's division going forward. I I like this whole Bailey-Sasha thing because finally there's not a title attached to it. But it just, again, makes me feel like they don't... They're not going to put time and effort to this women's division. And again, we talk about this women's revolution. We talk about the women's Royal Rumble, the women's Hell in a, or not Hell in a Cell, women's um, Elimination Chamber. We talk about the women's Money in the Bank. But... I want to know, like, what are they going to do? What are they going to do moving forward? Okay. Who cares if you put them in just a couple matches? Right. There's no stories involved, and that's what wrestling is. It's about stories. Uh, so right now, I don't think the women's revolution has really grabbed me quite yet, and I right. don't think that they really showed that they cared about it. Uh, so I'm interested to see what they do in the future, but as for this match, I'm going to have to give it two thumbs down. I mm -hmm. really was not a fan. But uh, tell us what you guys thought of the gauntlet match in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Rosie Wrestling, and we'll see you guys in our next video. Bye!